Despite holding the unenviable record of being home to the highest number of out-of-school children, and also regarded as the poverty capital of the world, Nigeria's quest for economic and social growth will further be hampered if the trend of abduction of school children is not stopped now. Stakeholders have said this. They further said that if the kidnap of students to bargain has come to stay in the country, it is a development that will adversely affect education in Nigeria. While well, discussing this with me today is educational consultant Ikechi Wogu, joining us live from Abuja. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Ikechi. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Great. Um, I mean, uh, mass school abductions, killings, this thing started in 2014, um, you know, with the government secondary school, Chibok, and over 110 students were taken. Um, we also had the Dapchi situation in Yobe in 2018. I mean, the list is endless. It, it just continued. And, and now we still have Leah Shaibu in unaccounted for. I mean, she's still in custody. We don't really know what's you know, happening to her. So the unfortunate situation continues to go on in this country. Um, but how do we explain the fact that our children are unable to have safe spaces to study, even when we know that we have millions, at least 10.5 million out of school children. Uh, we're trying to get those children to school. How do we ensure that these schools that we're trying to get them to are safe? Uh, well, uh, you know, for me, uh, more saddening is the fact that it's becoming the next big thing uh, amongst us. And worsening is um, the case of negotiations with these terrorists. So we're giving them a sense of importance. And for me, that's really disturbing. We seem not to have found our way to put an end to all of this. I mean, 2014 to 2021 is, um, you could say, seven years. And in seven years, a determined government should be able to um, either have a clear lead on what to do or to say, OK, we're coming very close to providing solutions. And right now, you have um, the case of fear, increasing fear. Should I go to school? Should I not go to school? Already, like you pointed out, at the time, it was 10.5. Right now, we are told it's about 13, point, 13 million out of school children. 13 million is almost the population of nations. OK, so um, you have great nations like Israel, you know, small nations that are ranging from seven, eight, nine, ten million 10 million in population. And so 13 million out of school children is a great population. And so um, looking at the demographic divides, you have more children who are, uh, you have a greater sense of edu penetration in the South, a lesser sense of edu penetration in the North. And now of the Northern population, you now have the scare of uh, half big security or uncertain security. And so ordinarily, some of these children, like in the Chiba girl's case, um, come from communities where the girl child is not um, given as much attention education-wise as the boy child. And so most of the young girls are married off untimely, OK? And then these ones are pulled through to this level of education. And then you come in with the threat or the scare of insecurity. It's really disheartening. In, in the recent case now, you have, um, you have what I would call school without walls, not in a good sense, school without security walls. And so everyone goes to school with some uncertainty, with some fear. Am I going to be the next victim? Or otherwise, um, you, you, you choose to stay at home and go uh, get forced into maybe child labor because this school thing is not working. There are several other concerns with decaying educational standards amongst us, dilapidated buildings, um, decaying infrastructure, and now this. So what, what will we say about the need to provide enhanced security, um, considering cases where even the security men have been shot dead, mm. okay, the gates flung open, and these miscreants have found their way into the dormitories or into the classrooms to pick up these children and walk long distances or drive long distances 
without any police checkpoints, without any security checkpoints. So what are we talking about? It's, yeah. it's, really, it's really disheartening to before, see the Before we talk more about the policing of these schools, let's talk about the fact that yeah. there are dilapidated schools and dilapidated buildings. Um, the last one, which is the Kagara issue, um, there is a fallen wall in that school. So, I mean, some of the classrooms also look very dilapidated. And I think that's detail for most of these schools in those parts. But then recently, Serap um, had petitioned the government uh, and asked them to um, probe Subeb because billions of Naira had been voted for the rehabilitation of these schools, for the refurbishing of these schools, but not, nothing has been done. So again, could it also be that government on its part has failed in terms of following through and making sure that we um, work with the UN um, SDGs in terms of education and making sure that we at least you know, are at par with other countries? Part of the growing trend of corruption amongst us is um, the, the fact that a lot of government appointments are done for patronage, political patronage. And so we, we identify people who are um, who we want to empower, who we want to say thank you to, who we want to appreciate for their strength of service during the political, um, the, the political campaigning and all that. And so we really don't care as to what interest they have in development. So these men come in as businessmen and they look at every money that is issued, that is released to them as their own share, their own reward for selfless service uh, in bringing us into power. So they really don't care. Now, because they are our political cronies, we find it um, a thing of evil, okay, to begin to probe them because they are men of our political interests. Okay, so it's easier to prove people or actors of the previous administration. It's easier to call out people of the previous administration. Because this time around, they are in our administration. I remember we want to grow our political empires. And so we, we say nothing to them. So they come in and they take these monies away for their own personal gains. There is no supervisory measure in place to check um, the level of performance of these men, even if we check or supervise or something, we do nothing. So if we come in a trend, everyone wants his own share of the cake. It's my turn to eat. Uh, the other man ate and nothing happened. This man ate and nothing happened. So even when the government becomes serious and wants to prove, it becomes a case of witch hunting. Okay, uh, well, you didn't prove the other man. Why are you probing me now? So a lot of a lot of disturbances, but I think we need to be we need to become better organized in our developmental systems. We need to create real structures that work, and we need to especially provide supervision. With the right, with the needed supervision, with the needed structures in place, I think we can better appraise performances at every level of, of play. Yeah. Let's talk about policing these schools in these soft target areas, because most of these places are on governed spaces. Most of these places where um, these bandits or terrorists operate from are very ungoverned. Now, if we must have schools or there are schools in these places that are soft targets, like I mentioned earlier, what can we do to make sure that these places are properly policed? Knowing that already the education system in those places are already threatened, why do we wait till something happens and then we now try to pay, spend more money to try to negotiate and bring back these people, or we now start to bring more security agents to that place. Why do we have to wait knowing that the Northeast and now the Northwest is under attack? Should the government be waiting to be told and security agencies to do the job of policing these schools? Because of course they have become a target of sorts. If we've had this issue since 2014 and in 2021 we're still dealing with the same issue, does that not mean that we have some somewhat of a half past dead government or a government that is not alive to its responsibilities? Yeah, to, to say that the government is not alive to the responsibilities is good. But then you also realize that it's a new deal amongst us. So it wasn't always there in our national um, operations. So um, going forward, I think the first step is to realize that it is, it is a reality amongst us right now 
and what do we do? So how do we start to create budgets now? Not just about education, but um, the government, the, the budget around security should be such that the schools are first. So we need to review the structure of the school environment. So government is building a school. Uh, you're not just building structures, you're building fences, high walls. You're providing a different approach to securing these children. Are they these students? How do they go home? What's the walking distance from, or, or the means of conveyance from the school to their homes? In the private sector, we use school buses and all that, which parents subscribe to. And there could be some, some better managed sense of security. But in the public school system, there have not been school buses. Should those ones now be incorporated, where uh, for the time being at resumption in the morning and at close of, of play in the, in the afternoon, you hire some security operatives to come supervise or, or, okay, the, the entry into the buses until the last child is dropped off at home. That's a new scheme. That's a new measure. Otherwise, leaving things as they are or beginning to work okay, little by little with as little attention as we are currently paying to education will make it so open-ended. So what amount of the budget will need to be added to education to ensure that this is dedicated to security? And how is that not, not going to stand in conflict with the already existing security Ike, Ikechi, that's budget? A, that's a whole kettle of fish on its own. I mean, look at the amount that, the, yes, the meager is. amount that's already voted to education. It's Nowhere. So, I mean, asking for more seems like pouring water on the back of a chicken, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is why there are growing calls for community policing. Okay. So that policing can be better managed. Okay. So you can easily identify with the miscreants within near environment, within near economic space that you can call them out. So um, now security is being brought into consideration with education. And we have not um, properly funded education. We have not properly funded security. So we need a more technical sense of reasoning when we talk about governance issues. Mm. Uh, governance should be scaled up in terms of performance, in terms of strategy, in terms okay. of reasoning. But leaving things as they are right now is going to be a totally uh, a, 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 a far cry from okay. development. I think at this okay. point, we're not serious about development and we're not ready to develop. Uh, nation. Well, on that side note, I want to say thank you very much to Ikechi Wogu, who is a, an educational yes. consultant uh, who joined us live from Abuja. Thank you very much. Thank All you. Right. We'll take a short break now, and when we come back, I'll give you my take. Yes. Here's my take. Let's talk safe spaces for our children to learn. I mean, we have about 10 0.5 million, if not more, as we speak, 13 million out of school children in Nigeria. And a large percentage of these children are from the north. These children need education and have no access to it. Those who have access to the education are being threatened by militancy, by insurgents, and terrorism in general. How about we make these school environments safe spaces for teaching and learning? How about our governments prioritize policing these soft targets where terrorists and bandits easily hit to attack? Is it rocket science? Do we need to tell our government and security agencies how to do their jobs? Instead of spending time and money to retrieve abducted students and teachers, let's devote some time and money to safety and policing of these schools. Create partnerships between school guards, police authorities, and initiate trainings for staff and school safety officers. Let's help schools create school security plans and, and work with the government to develop some rapid response system so that when they're faced with these attacks or you know, when these people come, response units will be on hand to intervene. This has to be our priority alongside our fight against this hydra-headed monster called terrorism in Nigeria. And my name is Mariana Kong, thanking you for watching.